you're still here, your next speaker is Frank. Uh, so a round of applause. And okay. Okay. So welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Frank Rehberger, so I'm living in Berlin, I'm a software consultant, and uh, some time ago I got attracted by Rust, and you, so I assume everybody here knows Rust, uh, just to repeat, it. so its key features are support for concurrency, memory safety, performance, and especially memory management, deterministic management uh, of resources. Uh, there is no garbage collector built in. Um, which is a very important feature. Uh, it favors stack allocation, no implicit boxing, so there is no hidden allocation of heap memory and uh, uh, causing uh, delays in, in the processing. So, and I ask myself, so if we want to, or did you ask yourself, did you ever ask, if I've got such a cool system, how could I integrate customizable features that are uh, perform some scripting and so allow me to change behavior during runtime without restarts, without reprogramming. So when I, um, I thought about a small uh, message broker which should be customizable. Uh, it sh so we would need byte level manipulation, deterministic management of resources of course because we don't want to get a step back back to the system. So if, if, I want to, uh, if I want to have a heap allocation, I could use Java, whatever, or uh, JavaScript uh, from the beginning and implement everything in JavaScript. So this is a very important feature for me. Uh, small footprint, security, safety, and customizable. And um, so I had to look around, so what's available? What could I use? And um, so I had a look at uh, Lua, Python, and JavaScript uh, as interpreters. And there is always a high uh, complexity, uh, dynamic heap allocation. It's always involved, so we can't get, uh, get out of it. Um, there's an execution overhead. And similar with JavaScript, VH. So there is even a, more, a higher complexity because it's jitting everything during startup. Uh, and then the, the benefit is there is a lower, lower um, uh, um, overhead, execution overhead uh, during runtime. Um, but none of these really allow me to do deterministic resource management. They all kick in, they all bring in a, a garbage collector, and in fact they destroy the benefits of the Rust environment or the application uh, executing this, uh, um, uh, this uh, execution engine. And so I had a look finally at fourth, and I stumbled across WebAssembly, and which is um, very um, low level, has low overhead or almost no overhead. And uh, the difference is that um, the other concepts, they always incorporate a full parser, uh, parsing, abstract syntax tree, optimizing the code, uh, getting intermediate representation, and then if it's jitted, getting some execution code. But still, JavaScript still is based, so it's not. It doesn't favor stack allocation. JavaScript favors heap allocation. So we always end up with a system uh, allocating a lot of memory, and I don't want this. So that was my what was my red line. So, and um, so uh, having a look at WebAssembly, um, so. Where does it come from and what is it intended for? So WebAssembly has be, uh, came up in uh, 2015 and it's not a replacement of JavaScript. So it's a complement of JavaScript. So every time uh, the, the, the problem with JavaScript is that it's always heap oriented and it's uh, doing a lot of uh, even mathematical operations uh, requiring, requiring heap uh, uh, operations. And um, so the, ben the, the idea is we introduce some kind of assembly code which will call by the JavaScript to, do the, the, to, to, um, to speed up perform, perform critical operations. Yeah. And um, so if we've got a JavaScript code and we have got the flow, uh, the flow here, so there might be an operation which kicks into the uh, WebAssembly code, 
doing the, uh, the performance critical uh, computation and then getting back and continuing JavaScript. And um, so WebAssembly uh, uh, incorporates um, a portable stack machine. The notation is uh, it's a binary notation, and um, but it also provides uh, a text uh, text based or uh, representation, um, and you can uh, you can use C plus plus or Rust to create uh, a binary code, a WebAssembly binary code, which will be glued with JavaScript into an HTML page, and then executed in the browser. And the idea or the question now was, would I be able to get away with JavaScript? And w would it be a solution just to use WebAssembly, just to use the, the execution engine here? And instead of JavaScript interacting with the with execution engine, uh, directly interacting from Rust to, to WebAssembly engine and getting all the benefits. Um, so it's, uh, it's widespread, so it, there is a community using WebAssembly. Um, there are good compilers. Um, I can do my compilation on a high-level language, compile it to WebAssembly, and execute it in a, in an, uh, in a small, lightweight uh, stack machine. So the build, um, so for C++ and Rust, uh, WebAssembly is a build target. So we've got the binary form format, WebAssembly, the text uh, representation, S expressions are called uh, VAST. Um, it WebAssembly supports only a few scalar types. Scal scalar type scale. Um, so um, integer 32, 64, uh, floating 32, and floating 64. And, um, and there is no support. So there is no native support of unsigned integers. So everything is mapped onto these uh, onto these um, types. Uh, the WebAssembly um, stack machine supports less than or has fewer than 256 operations or instructions. So it's very compact, and these uh, operations can be mapped or could be mapped easily onto um, up-to-date um, uh, architecture, CPU architecture. So it's sandboxed. It's using linear memory. Um, so it, it hasn't direct access to the global memory of your application. It's using tables, and all the memory access, uh, every memory access is uh, bound checked. If we stay in the linear memory, and so on. So pointers are just indices into the linear memory. And um, so when we uh, well, when we do a just-in-time compilation, the, um, there are, it's possible to get a 1.5 factor of native code speed. So how would it uh, look like? So um, we saw we have we have seen the picture before with the JavaScript and um, and the WebAssembly uh, execution engine. So with Rust, it would look like, like, uh, like this one. We've got the controller setting up um, or allocating some memory, which will be assigned to the um, WebAssembly instance. We've got the WebAssembly file, which will be loaded into, into the context of the Rust application, executable, and which represents the module. Um, we um, have got a table where we can Register callbacks, um, which could be which uh, these callbacks are the are the functions the module has got to uh, depends on has got to import. So any time we've got an external function here and uh, load it uh, as a module, uh, we have got to provide a table which will um, provide uh, the functionality of the function to step to call in indirect call to call this uh, Rust implementation. Um, we've got the stack machine. And so this is the box WebAssembly is running in. And uh, so it's qu a quite secure execution environment. So how does it look like? So I tried with, um, as I said, we can use Rust or C++ to create WebAssembly code, binary code. And um, 
So, for example, if we use um, Rust, if we use Rust, uh, we declare a function and we declare uh, some parameters and a return point, a return value. And as you can see here, this is an uh, integer 32. And in fact, this one would be a pointer into the into linear memory. And um, this would be mapped onto an index of, of type uh, um, uh, integer 32 as well. I can show you later. And um, so we would do the, I would uh, iterate over, over the memory, over this uh, buffer, and check for um, all characters E or I and replace it by O. So compiling this with cargo nightly, um, I get a, a file transform a wasm of size 50, 50, 57 k, uh, kilobytes, and, um, which is quite big. So uh, Rust compiles into a lot of additional meta information for the panic, panicking. So in case there is an, uh, a fault in the application, there would, there's also all the, the integers and error messages inside that are uh, written to the console. Um, and I, uh, so far I didn't manage to get this to optimize it and get rid of these uh, strings. Um, so name mangling, so the, within the module, the operation would be called transform. That would be the, the method name. That's important because if we look at the C++ implementation, um, similar, a return type integer, uh, integer first parameter, we've got the pointer to an array, uh, the same logic, and um, so this will be compiled with, uh, um, with a um, what? M script, right? And uh, the result is just is, uh, 296 bytes because it doesn't contain all the error strings uh, Rust is uh, compiling. The, the drawback is that the compiler is uh, doing uh, name mangling and um, the name within the module would be underline transform. But that's just, so, and, and I didn't manage to get this away. So I didn't manage to get the underline away. So if anybody has got a clue, um, the binary code looks like this. This are the 296 bytes and the textual uh, form would look like this. And here you can see the param first parameter, is, um, this is the first parameter, and this is the second parameter pointing to the location of the array within the linear memory. And calling it, we would just, um, we would just, uh, we would create a linear memory, uh, place our, uh, our, um, our message, uh, byte message into the linear memory at index one, uh, zero, and then calling this function with the length of the uh, array and uh, zero, uh, index zero. And this way we would tell the, the web assembly uh, where in the linear memory the array is located. So the credits to this um, are, are they, um, well, based, so this is the implementation prototype I did, uh, is based on web assembly interpreter done by Nick Wolf. Um, formerly at Parity Wasm at GitHub. And this one has been renamed now to Wasm Interpreter. Uh, Alex Christian for Tokyo IO and Karl Lerche for Mio. These are the three important uh, modules um, my prototype is based on, just as a proof of concept. Um, so I've got the, the code here. And as you can see here, can you read it? This one is the, the method I declare. This is the file I'm loading. Um, then I declare environment variable, uh, environment uh, object here. And then I uh, create the memory, uh, linear memory. This one is the place where the buffer, the message buffer, is placed into the linear memory. And um, then the ex execution is performed. Mm. These are the parameters. Ah. 
and here is the invoke export. This, I invoke an exported operation of the module and I get a return value and then I've got to evaluate the return value. Um, so, 10 minutes left. Okay, I've got a small showcase. Um, so I'm starting, I'm starting the application. So it's listening, it's a UDP based uh, application, listening for UDP packets. So I've got this um, a client and, um, and if I send a hello E, it responds. So it receives the message, it's processed by WebAssembly, uh, replacing all the I's by O's and sending back the message just to demonstrate. So, um, so it works even with longer strings and uh, that's it. So what I can do now is I can change um, so all I's shall be replaced by Y's. And I I recompile the the wasm, and now when I send so I get a Y. Hey, hooray! It works. So. So I did not check for performance. I did not. So it's it's a proof of concept. So every time every message is, it loads the the wasm file, uh, creating the, the WebAssembly instance, the module instance, executing it, and then throwing it away. So don't ask me about performance. So and um, another aspect is uh, it's it, it's interpreted. So the wasm i is interpreting WebAssembly. So there is, uh, there would, it would be possible to, uh, to, to create some kind of uh, JIT compiler uh, compiling the module directly to native code and probably that would be much faster. No? But that would be the next step. And um, maybe I could make use of uh, existing modules for, for Mozilla, Firefox uh, or other uh, web browsers and just reusing those um, uh, WebAssembly execution engines. Okay. Are there any questions? Oh. Um, can you give us a sense of how much code it requires to make a simple WebAssembly interpreter? Like how much code um, this interpreter, well, hmm? ah, the question is, the question is, uh, how much code does it require to create um, a WebAssembly interpreter? Um, I have no, I, I can't tell you a number of lines. Um, but it's a small project at GitHub. And um, so, yeah, I can't, I can't answer the question, so, sorry. Is it like very small? It's small. It's a small, it's a small module, and um, when I strip this application, which is not ideal, um, strip. So, so this is. So it's 800k. So the application containing um, all the Tokyo uh, uh, logic, uh, asynchronous I/O, and the and the interpreter was an interpreter is 800k statically linked against uh, uh, the local libraries. So that's not much, and probably could be even reduced. Yes, please.
Yes, you can. The question is, is it possible to declare, to, to, to uh, access functions in the Rust environment from the WebAssembly? Yes. Um, there is a good, um, there is this one. This is the callback table for, or the table. Um, this table here. This contains, so you, you, you define in your C++ code or Rust code, you define um, um, a signature of a method and it, which is ex external. You use it in your code, you call it in your code, the compiler will realize, oh, it's an external, uh, external function and it will be uh, declared as external function here, which needs to be imported. And these functions are accessed using the table. So when you, when you load the WASM file, the module, and resolve all the dependencies, um, it will check for the existence of uh, specific functions. And um, so it will call the function which is registered here and call, call in here. Yes? Um, I don't know, well, it's a question if, if we can stack up. So I would, I, I didn't, I didn't try this, but I don't see, I don't see why this shouldn't be possible. So it might be, well, I don't know how, the, well, I've got to check the, the web assembly interpreter, how this uh, the, the calling the exported function uh, if there is any restriction that it, there should be only one call to an exported function at any time i don 't know uh, so good question i didn't i didn 't check this that's um so right now uh strings are a problem because strings so if we talk about web assembly web assembly is something which has been established in a javascript world and um so javascript strings look different to rust strings but there is some uh, there is a there are um uh what is it um there are some people are working on it uh, to get uh, some kind of to get a kind of standard to access strings. So the idea is to use to register strings in here. So if let's assume we have got a function, we want to call the function and hand over a string. So the string could be would be registered here, and the stack machine or the module could verify what kind of string is it, and then performing the correct uh, interpretation of the string. So it could be zero terminate string, it could be a length encoded string, it could be whatever string. So, um, so that, that's a problem. Some people are using the linear memory and more, effect, more or less they serialize their data into the serial, into linear memory and then call the stack machine. So right now a stack machine should be, so if you define a boundary uh, between Rust and uh, WebAssembly, you should use uh, the the boundary where you deal with binary data. For example, if you receive a message from the network and you want to process it, that would be easy uh, to to um, to put into the linear memory and then process it using uh, WebAssembly. If you've got a complex DOM tree internally, uh, that's not a good idea. So, um, but people are working on this, and uh, JavaScript uh, or the JavaScript community is working on this too. So getting DOM trees handed over to the WebAssembly engine and we've got to check how we would be able from Rust to do the same. But we always have got to, uh, to first of all, it's a, it's a JavaScript standard, a web standard. It's not defined by the Rust community. So we are, we, we are always second and we have got to check out how we could incorporate or using the technology. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.